Hey everyone, Necromansplain here. Today I'm showing you how I made my World Tier 4 capstone at level 62 so much easier. If this helps you too, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As you can see, I'm set up with a Bone Spear No Minion build. I'm heavily focusing on vulnerability, crit chance as well as crit damage against vulnerable. I'm using corpses and blood orbs to sustain my essence regeneration, health, and fortify. Since it's a crit build, I'm going to tag on Elixir of Savagery for an extra 25% chance. If you're doing this at a lower level, I recommend using an Elixir of Fortitude or Iron Skin for that extra survivability. Now coming into this first room here, you're going to be faced with a familiar mechanic, gathering some items, putting them in an altar or a pedestal to unlock some doors. Now most people are going to go on that right path. You're definitely not going to do that, you're going to take the left path here, and that's critical to doing this easy. Now in both ways, you're going to make a circular path around a room. You're not going to fight a single mob as you run through here. You can take the outside path to try and not aggro as many enemies, but now cut inside, unlike what I do here. Doesn't matter though, a lot of the AI pathing, they tend to block each other as they're running and rushing you down. But if you do end up getting hung up for a second, just use your evades. Now as you're making this counterclockwise path around a room, stay to the right side around here just makes it a little easier to path around the mobs. But like I said, a lot of them are going to end up blocking each other anyways on the way through. You can see I'm barely taking any damage as I'm running through here. And it doesn't really matter how many mobs you aggro, right once you get in here and interact with this tome here, that de-aggros all mobs and just these small mobs are going to be spawning. Now you can either burst them down immediately or if you're running a build that can group them up like mine, you're going to wait a little bit just so that you can get them all together. I personally use corpse tendrils to gather them all up and use my first couple bone spears to burst them down. Now I saw in the campfire chat recently, Rob Turkson talked about his play with the Necro. Some quality of life here on a controller. You can't specifically pick your corpse tendrils to utilize your environment like I'm doing here and getting the maximum damage off of the bouncing bone spears and the obstacles that I'm working with here. So as you can see, my tome has dropped. I'm gonna finish off these last couple mobs here. Now these mechanics that we're used to, we're familiar with gathering them in the numerous times that we've had. We know that when we pick them up, we do get a 25% movement speed buff. Now if you're a necromancer, this is going to feel amazing until you play with your friends. Then you're going to see how the uh, necromancer quality of life really is. As you can see here. Go, you go, grow, you, you grow move, like... I have 25% speed boost oh, and wait, I wait just for, move as it. fast as you. What the fuck? Oh, I get even faster too. Now once placed in the pedestal, you will get the first debuff of this capstone. This is a stacking debuff, where every 5 seconds you get one stack, up to a total of negative 50% against you. If you kill any mobs, this will remove the stacks. Same as before, what you're going to want to do is make a circular path around a room. You're going to dodge all of the mob. And hold on to your evade just in case you do hung up. Just like before, stay on the close end of the circle. That way you can try and aggro as little mob as possible. I'm at about 10 stacks right now, and that's only 10% debuff against me. That's not too bad. When you come in here, right once you interact with this fallen temple, that puts up the barrier and the wall to stop enemies from coming in. Now the main focus of this fight are these shamans. 
the shamans will be resurrecting the exploding minions and those ones will focus you down. The main fallen temple in the center will also be resurrecting the exploding minions that do the highest burst damage against you, however they just explode in place. As long as you focus the shamans down, you don't need to worry about when they're exploding. Now here is the best part of the mechanic. It spawned two separate stones for you to pick up. And as you can imagine, we're going to use both of them. After you pick up this first one here, you're going to run it down to the pedestal. We're going to put it in and that's going to unlock this door. When that happens, you're going to get the second debuff versus your crowd control. That's okay though, because it's only going to be temporary and it doesn't go into the boss fight. Now it won't be marked on the map, but the item will still be on the ground and it will still give you that 25% speed buff. This is going to definitely help with uh, getting through all the way to your boss fight. Now this does work co-op. You're just going to grab both of them before leaving the room and whoever you want to continue with the buff, whoever may be the lower level, less sustainability, or the necromancer, in my case here, as you can see the jury just sprinting past me, they may want to hang on to the item and get the buff for the rest of the capstone dungeon. Now before carrying on here, you're going to want to remove those debuffs. Each mob that you kill removes one stack, so just by removing a few, you're able to remove them and make it a little easier to kite through. The only mob that we're going to want to focus down are the elites once our debuffs are gone. We only need to kill three of them to collect the animus to open the gate for our boss fight. Now you can try doing this strategy as low level and as early access as you have to this capstone dungeon, however, it will require some burst potential. Speed doesn't matter here as you can see with my slow necromancer. As long as you have some evades to get out of danger, maybe a little sustain or some self healing, that's fine. Even if you have to use your ultimate, it really helps to have that little burst potential or grouping when you're at a level disparity. Now that my debuffs are removed, it makes my encounter here a little bit easier. These elites are not to be messed with. They do have a strong one hit potential here. When they stomp the ground, they'll do a frontal charge at you and then do a blasting cold wind. Either of those can have one hit potential if you are a low enough level. I use my corpse explosion to have my chance at spawning blood orbs. This stacks for my unique that I have in my chest armor as well as giving myself fortify and better health sustain. I'm constantly trying to use my corpse tendrils to position enemies near walls or closer to any obstacles that I'm able to bounce my bone spears off of and get that full potential out of the reflecting shards. Positioning can really matter when you're playing a necromancer bone spear build. You're not just chucking them around, you're strategically using your corpse tendril, which you cannot do on console just by pressing a button and locking on to the nearest corpse. You're going to sprint now to your altar to deposit the animus. Once again, just evade if you get hung up a little bit. Don't worry about your debuffs. They're removed right once you put the animus in. Now you can sprint past these guys and go straight into the boss fight. I prefer just to destroy all of them. And then I have the health station right there to use before I go into the boss fight. Make sure I'm topped up on my potions.
Now I was previously using a minion build prior to doing this at level 60. However, I did not have the single target burst potential out of my Bone Spear as a hybrid build. I had to go full focus in the Bone Spear to get the single target damage that I needed to burst down the boss. So if you do need to make an adjustment to your build to have that burst potential, that quick high damage, it can really help get you through this. Because of my unique, you'll occasionally see that I'm using corpses even though there's no enemies around, trying to get that stack up on my unique for the free bone spirit. Now going into this boss fight, having that extra 25% move speed really helps with dodging a lot of Elias' mechanics here. Really helps to have a good evade. A lot of these first few attacks, they're pretty easy to dodge. Whenever Elias is using any fireball attacks, as long as you keep some distance, you should be able to avoid them using one or two evades at most. A big portion of this fight is gauging your distance from Elias between close and mid-range to be able to have the best chances at dodging his attacks. Those flame walls that he throws out, you have a better chance of avoiding them if you are close to him as compared to using his fire orbs that he shoots out, you have a better chance of avoiding them at a mid to long range. These larger enemies that are going to spawn, you want to burst those down pretty quick because their flame attacks can stack up really, really quick. Now you can see how many close encounters I'm having right now. Without this 25% move speed buff, I really would have a hard time avoiding all three of those firewall shots. Within this last health bar, he's going to continually start spawning minions. If you do get a chance to stagger him, use your ultimate, your highest burst potential, whatever you got to get through this last health bar. Because he will continually spawn minions and spam any of his moves he has at hand. But with some nice bursty damage, a little bit of sustain and stability, and a nice little 25% movement speed buff, we will get through your world tier 4 capstone dungeon.